Hello and welcome. While the term mindfulness is used quite a bit these days, really as a mental health buzzword, but do you know exactly what it means? And, or I guess how you can apply it to your life to help support your busy lifestyle as a parent. Well, that's why we're here today and to chat about it with our special guest, Sally Callett. Now, Sally is a professional meditation teacher, a certified sound meditation practitioner, practitioner and founder of a well-being hub and mindfulness studio called Miro Suna. Thanks for joining us, Sally. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Now, this is great. And I think very timely with um, everything that's been happening in the world so far this year. And there's lots to talk yeah. about. Um, and I guess there's really two different worlds in saying that, that we are talking about and or bubbles, as I like to refer to them. Um, and, you know, the bubble on this side is, you know, parents live in a busy, tiring, some would say exhausting bubble with lots mm-hmm. of noise and chaos that comes along with it. And on the other hand, when we hear mindfulness, we think of living in a positive peaceful, blissful state of mind that um, really seems to be completely opposite to, I guess, the world that parents live in. Um, but I guess really it is possible to integrate the two. Um, and that's really what we're here to learn about from you today and to, to find out how it's all possible. So I guess to begin with, um, for someone who maybe doesn't know exactly what the, the true definition of what mindfulness mm-hmm. is, can you just maybe start off by um, just explaining that to us? Yeah, sure. So I guess like so many people have different um, versions or definitions of mindfulness and some might even think that it is meditation, which it's really not. And uh, Mirasuna's definition of it is simply the awareness of your mind, your body and your speech. So what I'm just trying to say there is, you know, being aware of the quality of the thoughts in your mind, the quality of your speech. Are you saying good things or are you saying negative things? And then finally, your actions. Are you doing good or you're doing harm? So mindfulness is the awareness of all of the three. Yeah. So mindfulness really means, I guess, what? Maintaining a moment by moment awareness of our thoughts um, and our feelings and maybe like our bodily sensations and also our, or the environment around us, would you say? With a nurturing yeah. sort of lens, would you say? Yeah, so like if we can be aware of what's happening in our mind, our body and our speech, then naturally we're going to be able to catch when we are acting in a way that isn't in line with our true self or our true intentions. What does that mean? It means that we're going to be aware when things don't feel right, when we don't feel good or when we're doing something that we actually don't want to be doing or saying. So if we can be aware, and the first step is being aware, we can then know what we want to change. And if we can then create that change in our life, then we can make a better life for ourselves. And that is why mindfulness is a lifestyle. It's a way of life. Oh, I love that. So when we practice mindfulness, I guess our thoughts tune into what we're sensing in, in the present moment, is it? So we're not really rehashing the past or imagining the future. We're not thinking about what we're going to cook for dinner tomorrow night or where we have to be with running the kids around and all of that other stuff that's going on, you know, in the past or in the future. It's actually been in the present moment. Is that right? Yeah, we're really trying to engage our mind in what's happening right now. And yes, it's okay to think about your past and it's okay to think about the future, but there's a time and a technique and a way to actually think of those things. For example, you don't want to think about the past if you're holding yourself onto some guilt or some something that you didn't approve of of yourself because that's just torture. Yeah. But if you think about the past to reflect on your behavior and how you can make that better in the future, then that's a sensible way of looking at the past. And looking at the future, it's healthy for us because we want to be able to have some plans and some direction and some ambition on where we want to go and who we want to be. But then it's not healthy to be so fixated on the future and live our lives today as if tomorrow has happened because sometimes that might not be the case. So I guess, yes, mindfulness is about being in the moment, but it also doesn't mean that we always strictly have to be in the moment. The moment. We're, yeah. we're trying to learn about how to live mindfully across the past, present and the future. And that's maybe something people generally don't talk about. <laughs> and why do you think it's so important then? 
because it literally can change our whole lives. Like I've watched my own life transform. I've watched people's lives transform, my clients' lives. The thing is a lot of people think mindfulness is not for them. They think they're already happy or they think they're too far gone and they can't help themselves. Whatever your situation is, mindfulness will always be able to help you if it's done in the right way and if you're doing it in a supported way with proper techniques. And if you do it right, you'll always end up with a happier life overall. Not to say that it's not hard as you're trying to heal. Mm. And talking about our day-to-day lives, I guess it seems a very natural evolution that as life and the world around us has become busier over time and our, our, it's it had to reflect, I guess, our brain's ability to match and keep up with the pace of life as well, um, which means that, you know, as we're just saying, you know, we are sometimes in, in worrying about the past or the future as well. So in its essence, it seems like that mindfulness is really to help put us into a, a positive state of mind. Would you say it's just, it's more yeah. of a positive place. It is. And ultimately it's trying to guide us down a positive life. But having said that, the way I always explain it to my community is that sometimes healing does hurt because sometimes we're trying to overcome some of the things that are uncomfortable. You know, it does sometimes make us look deep into ourselves on traits that we are not proud of. And that can take time to resolve and it's not always easy, but the overall outcome of this way of life is a positive way of life. Yes. Mm. It is about increasing the positivity that we have and reducing the negativity that we have. Yeah. And a lot of people really equate mindfulness with good feelings. Um, so in talking about feelings, if someone is new to practicing mindfulness, um, how would you describe how it would, or how it actually feels? If you're practicing mindfulness on your own, it can be a bamboozle of information. Um, there is so much out there, so many quotes, so many books, so many different types of meditation techniques. Because as I said, a lot of people think mindfulness is meditation and then they have to sit there for 10 minutes a day to meditate. And so <laughs> I would say that it can be quite confusing. It can be very confusing to start practicing mindfulness. So I would say that when you get over that confusion <laughs> and when you have someone that's guiding you through it, it then becomes extremely life-changing and very rewarding. The experience is profound and it's very enlightening and you will very quickly start to see some positive changes in your life and you will suddenly realize how much you have been living in this state of autopilot where your brain just runs off and thinks the things that it wants to think and says the things that it wants to say without you actually not having that much control. So one of the very quick things you will start to notice is oh my gosh, I am, I am me. This is what I just said. This is what I just did. And suddenly you just become so aware of everything in your life. And only then can you start then saying, do I like it? Do I not? Do I need to change that? How can I change that? Mm. For any busy parent, I guess, watching or listening to this, they're going to say, this is all lovely. It's nice and it's fluffy and it's a bit, you know, for some people it may be a little bit woo-woo, um, but mm-hmm. the parents may be thinking to themselves, like, this is crazy. I've got a busy life. I've got mm-hmm. kids running around. I've got my, my partner. I've got, um, I've got my work. My life is full. My place is absolutely full. And mm-hmm. I can't possibly think about finding the time, you know, for all of this nice um, peacefulness. Yeah. So what would you say to a busy parent um, maybe thinking um, at this point of the chat so far? I would say don't think of it as you have to change your life on what's happening on the outside. Don't think for a second that you have to stop doing things um, that are important to running your household and to running your career. Obviously, paying the bills is important. Raising your children is showering and, you know, going to the toilet. All of these things are very natural that we can't cut out of our lives. So don't think about it as, um, don't think about it as you having a calf time out of your day. Think about ways to actually make your day meaningful. So when you're washing the dishes, wash the dishes. Don't think about what you're going to cook for dinner. Don't start picking up a phone call. Just really let your brain focus on washing the dishes or doing the laundry or driving in a car, listening to music. Because what you're essentially doing in that moment is you're still being productive. Like even if you're in a customer meeting and you're focusing on what the customer is saying, you're still being productive. All you're doing now, though, is you're letting other external thoughts start to quiet down. And by quieting down the hundreds of thoughts you have and simplifying that down to a few, 
you are practicing mindfulness, you are relaxing your mind, you're actually relaxing your brain waves so that you can get into an alpha state of brain waves to, to be able to be aware but consciously make decisions in a more relaxed way. And that is proven to minimize stress, depression, and anxiety. Cool. So I guess the question is really what's the point of mindfulness and how can, ba- how can parents really benefit from it? Hmm. We have so many reasons for practicing mindfulness, but one of the top um, reasons why parents like to practice mindfulness is because it improves their relationship with their children, with their children and with their partners. And it also makes the whole family experience more rich because instead of thinking about, oh, these, these are all the chores I haven't done. And oh my gosh, the kids are late to school. The kids won't eat their breakfast. And and I am late for my day job and all of those things, it actually helps you put things into perspective and helps you be able to handle yourself and your day with grace. So that is the biggest thing is it helps you get through all the stuff you still have to do, but you mentally feel so at peace with it all. Yeah. So why, I guess in some instance, is mindfulness maybe say difficult for some people and for someone um, that's maybe new to it, what are some of the main challenges that they, they may sort of encounter and then have to overcome? Mm. Um, one of the top reasons why I think it's really difficult to start mindfulness is because people have the wrong idea of mindfulness. They think it's meditation or they think it takes time. And yeah, okay, it takes a little bit of time initially to learn about what it is and you can do that in quick ways. Like I teach it through my course. But the thing is, when people realize that mindfulness is a change of your mindset and it's just a way of life. I love that change of your mindset. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Like it's changing your mindset. You still can do everything you want to do. But when you realize that, when that, that moment or that penny drops, you're like, crap, I can practice mindfulness, (laughs) you know, but until then we're all too busy for it. (laughs) Yeah. So I guess we've established that there's um, a whole heap of benefits um, with mindfulness and speaking about the physicality of it, um, I guess mindfulness can help to regulate our emotions. Um, It sounds like it can definitely help to decrease stress and anxiety um, and depression um, and also can help us, I guess, sort of focus our attention as well as um, observing our thoughts, it sounds like, Mm -hmm. uh, and feelings without judgment. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. It can do so many more things um, because when you control all of those things that are happening in your mind and your body, you can then have other benefits such as um, even sleeping better. You know, like we really need sleep. Even one night of bad sleep can result into a lot of emotional and physical um, disadvantages in our body. And so, you know, mindfulness is an overall, yeah, there's short-term benefits, but there's actually long-term benefits to it as well. So, yeah. And how would you describe what the long-term benefits are then? I think overall, you're going to find a few things. Like there's a lot of things, but these are some key ones. Is number one, the relationships in your life significantly change. And they change. And I don't want to say they always get better because some relationships end up, I guess, fading away too. As you go on your journey, you'll start to realize that there are some people or some connections in your life that no longer serve you. So practicing mindfulness can help you cleanse things in your life that you know, you don't need things that don't, that aren't actually good for you or that don't do anything for you. And that does actually include people in our lives as well. So, you know, as we get older, we know that it is quality, not quantity. Yes. And that is something something we can mindfully do and control because there are still some people who feel like they're not able to control that, that it's just happening. Yeah. Um, But so so, so it really is that there's, there's, there's only a, a, it's a positive benefit either way because if you are cleansing sort of the toxic people out of your life because you're maybe more aware of um, your feelings and and maybe the things that eventuate from having them in your life it's only going to be a good thing to to be able to to maybe um, move them out of your life anyway I guess so yeah uh, yeah because we don't have time right like this whole society has no time for anything and if we keep putting junk into our lives and I'm, I'm not saying you know just people but I'm saying like everything like distraction like doing things that actually don't aren't meaningful they don't really get us anywhere closer to a higher purpose or help us achieve more happiness or more relaxation if we keep putting empty things into our lives then of course we have no time you know so (laughs) would you say that there's a goal to mindfulness at all and if so um what is it 
maybe? Yeah. So I, I definitely have a goal and I'm very Eastern philosophy centric in my teachings. And my ultimate goal is a state where I have pure wisdom and pure positivity, where I've got pure generosity, pure patience, and just pure virtue. And what that means is every day in every moment, everything we do is either positive or negative. Yep. So, you know, if you, if you go rescue an animal, that's a positive act. If you go, um, go, you go hit someone, that's a negative act. And the things that we say, you know, I can, I can say something positive, like uniting speech where I bring people together, or I could engage into idle gossip, which really is not helpful because it divides people. So everything that we do and say and think is always classified as a positive or a negative. So yep. the ultimate goal of mindfulness is to try and be positive all the time now you'd have to be a buddha to, to be to be positive all the time right but um and we're humans and we have flaws and that's totally fine but that doesn't stop us from making that our end goal mm -hmm. because the more happy we are i mean the more positive we are the more happy we are and um i might leave with like a little formula here for happiness is that the formula for happiness is an increase in pers in the persistence of positive emotions over negative emotions. So the more we can increase our positivity coupled by decreasing our negativity, that actually equals happiness. And that's just not that's not just my formula and that's not just the eastern philosophy formula, that's the all that's also the scientific formula to happiness. Mm -hmm. So we can approach life very systematically and very um, with with a bit of structure and process, yeah. Yeah. And I think to add another layer to that, things are either negative or positive, that really anchors down to everything really is either comes from a place of love or it comes from a place mm -hmm. of fear. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so it's just choosing, I guess, to, to live life and to, to come from a place of love um, as, as opposed to sort of acting um, and, and speaking and living our lives from a place of fear. I think overall, mm. but um, mm. you know, I guess if a parent really starts practicing mindfulness in their day-to-day -day lives, then what types of changes do you mm -hmm. think they would be likely to see in their lives? The first and biggest change that my clients, like my mummies and dads experience is decreased of anger and frustration. Oh, that's, that's a bit nice. Be <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't we all need some of that? <laughs> that has to be the biggest and quickest um, revelation and positive change in someone's life is because through the techniques that I give, you can actually reframe and reset your mindset so that you actually receive um, the external stimulus happens. So something or someone does something or says something and it makes you, which is always going to happen as, as part of life. It's just part of, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. Right. So you may as well embrace it, but I teach you how to embrace it. And I teach you how to reframe that thinking so that your brain can default into better behavior. Cause right now our brain defaults to anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. We want to stop that. We want to change it, the habit and we want to default it to thinking from a place of love and kindness and patience. So that's definitely the first uh, positive change that parents will experience through practicing mindfulness is that they will have a significant decrease of anger and frustration. And then the second one following from that is naturally a better relationship with their children, husbands and wives, because you're less angry. <laughs> you're more loving. <laughs> There's more room for love. There's more room for generosity to give back and then to truly live in the moment and enjoy that family time together because you only live once your kids are only young once and hey a blink of an eye and they're teenagers and then adults moving out of home we don't want to miss that yeah and would you say that mindfulness actually improves mental health as well mm. yeah for sure like it's not even just me but like the, the studies show it um, there's, you know, across Eastern philosophy, science, personal experiences, my clients' experiences, 200%, it improves your mental health and your mental well-being yeah. and your physical too. Yeah. And I guess, guess like sort of following life in lockdown, parents may have experienced just that really lovely feeling of just like life sort of slowing down and living life at a slower pace. Um, and I guess we don't really have to wait for a reason in our lives to find, um, you know, happiness or, or, you know, 
arrive at a place where we have have more sort of peace of mind maybe as well it's more about sort of finding it in the everyday um and it's cliche i guess as the saying is you know happiness um as that saying is you know happiness isn't a journey um so happiness is not a destination it's a journey sorry um and that tells me that I guess we have to find happiness in the, in the everyday moments. So there are, and there are moments of bliss in, in our ev- everyday lives. It's just a matter of being in the, in the moment and, and being mindful to find those moments. Do you think? Yes, a hundred percent. There are so many good things that happen to us, each and every one of us. And, you know, my, my Buddhist teacher always said to me, like when people complain about how hard their lives are, or when we sit down and complain, we've got to remember that there's always someone less fortunate than us. And there's always someone more fortunate than us, however you define that. But what you can't change is you are you. And this is the world that you live in and this is your life. And you only have one life. And you want to make sure as hell that you make it the best one that you can. You know, so one thing that we don't know is when are we going to pass away? When is it going to be our time? And if that day is tomorrow, I always say to myself, I want to make sure that my life was meaningful and worth living by that day when it happens. Yeah. And I will do everything in my day to help myself and to help other people on this journey as I am on mine. Mm-hmm. And I guess everyone really does owe it to themselves just to be able to put themselves in a better place um, mm. each and every day. So this can definitely help. Now, look, we um, published your article titled Mindfulness for Busy Mums. Now, it's not just for mums, for dads as well uh, and carers. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit, if like for someone who hasn't read the article yet, could you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired mm. you to write it? Yeah, I inspired it because for parents, I like I work with a lot of parents and I think they need mindfulness more than ever in their lives because they've got such great responsibility. You know, not only do they have to be responsible of their own lives, but, you know, they have to make sure they are paying the bills for the family to be able to raise their children. Their children need their time, need their teachings. And it's very difficult when you're trying to, I guess, become a better person while trying to make other people and caring for other people and making them a better person too. So I was inspired to write it because of all my clients who came to me and they told me that it changed, like studying with me changed their lives. And that made me think, gosh, I wish I could help more people on this journey that was in the same boat because it's so powerful, you know, and the article really is about educating people that mindfulness is not some mystical thing. It's not some woo-woo thing where it's about meditating and sitting with fluffy cushions and candles. <laughs> it's something that we can do here and now, you know, even whoever's listening to this video or the podcast, just, you know, being so mindful of the words that are coming across and the intention and how you can truly be open to receiving these words and these lessons, as opposed to saying, oh, I'm too busy. I need to move on. Yeah. Because if, if you're always too busy and always moving on, then you're not really living your life in the moment then. And tomorrow you're going to wake up and think, oh my gosh, what even happened yesterday? <laughs> and then over time, it's like, what just happened in the last year or two, you know? Yeah. So like, why do you think that mums need to- mums more than anyone, I guess, need to practice mindfulness. Um, And why do you think they struggle really to do so? Mm. I think mums need it more than ever because our um, nurturing natural instinct of being a woman is to give, give, give. And it's to protect, it's to provide, and it's to nurture. And therefore, mums probably spend like more than 24 hours a day, if that was even possible, um, (laughs) thinking and doing things for other people, such as their children and their husbands and partners and so forth. And so when you do that, it's great for others because everyone else is getting things done for them, right? It's amazing. Mother's love is greater than, is well, is deeper than the ocean. But the problem is you very quickly will feel drained if you don't give anything back to yourself. And there's a saying that you can't love others unless if you love your, yourself. And growing up, I never really understood what that was until I witnessed my mum doing the same thing. And she would just give every part of herself to my dad and my sisters and I. She actually had nothing left for herself. And it got to a point where she became quite negative and she needed us to help her. And so what I'm trying to say there is, When you have fully exhausted yourself and given every part of you where you've got nothing left to give, it becomes more that other people now have to start looking after you and you can't give any more, which is counter 
productive because you actually want to keep giving as a mother. Yes. <laughs> as a parent, you want to keep giving. All right, but cool. the reality is you just can't keep giving if you don't actually practice self-love and self-care. And that's why I really want to help parents. All right, cool. So we've now established what mindfulness is, why it's so important. Um, and, and I guess some of the benefits of it as well. So we're at that point now that, okay, so we've made a decision. We want to be able to bring more mindfulness into our day-to-day day -day lives. Um, what are some things that mums can do, parents and carers as well, can mm -hmm. do uh, to implement, um, I guess, to start sort of bringing that into their life and making some, some positive like habits. Now in your article, I think you list seven different ways that people can mm. start doing that. Could you maybe share some of those with us now? Yeah. So some of the really low hanging fruit, easy wins, because we all need easy wins in oh, life. Oh, low hanging fruit. Love that. <laughs> low hanging fruit is, you know, when you, as I mentioned before, when you're doing the dishes, because we all have to wash the dishes like every day of our lives, or when you're doing the clothes or when you're hanging your clothes, I challenge you to spend two minutes doing that at least two minutes where you're just feeling totally present with you, the sponge, the dish. <laughs> That's it. And I know this could sound so ridiculous, but honestly, this stuff works. And if you just spend those two minutes, just focusing on how clean you're getting these dishes or how dry you're trying to get them or trying to put them back neatly where they belong, you are, it, it's not so much that, you know, you're making this it's not so much about the dishes. It's actually about what's happening in your mind that you're changing. So I strongly encourage you to try that. Another technique that I really like is when you shower today, just take note of how quick are you moving? That's all. How quick are you scrubbing your face? How quick are you brushing your teeth? Are you speeding through it or are you taking your time? Because most like most people I know probably are speeding through it. You're probably not washing your face for 30 seconds, which is, you know, the recommended time that you wash your face. Some people don't brush their teeth for the full two minutes, you know, and why? Because I don't have time because their brain is in this default rush. So my second technique that I cover in the article is just take your time when you shower, you know, really enjoy your shower if you have one of those crazy showers that are like high pressure, like my one at home, it actually causes you some subconscious stress because it's just pouring down at you. So try and, you know, reduce the pressure of the shower. Try to slower, uh, try to slow down your movements and focus on just one thing that happened during your day. Just one thing. It might even be a bad thing. It might even be something that, oh, you're like not so comfortable with how you reacted or you feel bad that you yelled at your child and, you know, lost your shit during this particular moment. It could be that or it could be something that happened that you really, really enjoyed today. You know, that two minutes that you did actually go to take a walk at the park or when you walked your dog or when you played with your child and then they said their first word. Something like that, you know, think of that one moment as you dial down the pressure in your tap, if it's really strong, um, as you're slowing down your washing your face or you're brushing the teeth sort of moments and just see how you feel because we're not asking for a lot. We're not saying, hey, don't shower or don't wash your dishes. We're saying, hey, keep being productive, but change your mindset. Okay. What's in your mind. So I get it. So we don't need to then block out a certain period of time of every day to, to say, this is my time to be mindful. It's actually yeah. in what we do in, in our, in our day-to-day -day lives is actually being mindful as we're doing those things. Is that, is that the yeah. best way to describe it? Would you say? Yeah, 200%. Yeah. All right, cool. So it, it can be practiced even, I guess, when the kids are running around and, and, and parents are struggling to find time for themselves, they can still be mindful in that moment. Would you say? Yeah, absolutely. And also I want to say here that it, I've written an article on this as well. It's about how you define me time. A lot of people define me time quiet in a bizarre way in the sense that it's only when they get to sit down and watch a movie on their own or when they get to sit down and read a book or when they can go shopping on their own. Um, but that's actually not only what me time has to be. Me time is just you, it's, it's time when you get to spend in your own head and in your own body just being aware of all that stuff happening. And when you're washing the dishes, I know a lot of people don't consider that me time because they consider it a chore. But the challenge that I'm giving you guys is to turn those chores into me time mm -hmm. by focusing on yourself. 
So, so what about practicing mindfulness when I guess you're waiting to pick the kids up for say from kinder mm-hmm. or for school or from, you know, waiting um, from at their dancing class or basketball mm-hmm. or football practice or something like that. So, so you have those, those moments, for example, um, where you, you have a bit of downtime. What about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in those moments, they're perfect, right? Because this is the perfect moment to practice mindfulness because your default is going to be, let me check the phone, let me reply to my emails, let me call whoever I have to call, oh, and let me write my shopping list. All right, so we're going to just try and stop that for just two minutes, even just two minutes. We're going to try and stop. We're going to watch our children. We're going to watch how much they've developed in whether it's that swim school or the gymnastics class or whatever it is. Um, we're just going to observe what's happening around us. We're going to observe other children um, and just the fact that it's good or good or bad weather. You know, the fact that we're here breathing, it's quite a miracle that we're all still here, you know, just more observant of what's around you. Yeah. And what about like setting prompts on your mobile phone, say um, at the same time each day as a remind, Mm. like reminder to be mindful. Um, Do you think that we should be doing that or should we just really, make an attempt as you were saying earlier on in the chat we don't have to be mindful 24 7 but it's just choosing the point of time in each day to be mindful so do you think it's better to to block out a certain time in the day um with a prompt on your phone um say for example if you know you you go to work and you've got your lunch break setting some time Mm -hmm. then or what are your thoughts or is it more the practice of just trying to find it in in our day-to-day lives I think the thing is, if you set a daily reminder, what's going to happen is it's going to be great for the first few days. And then very quickly, you're going to be like, the alarm rings and you're going to be like, dismiss, dismiss. And you're going to get faster and faster at pressing that dismiss button. Because <laughs> 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 it's just something that happens every day, right? You're like, oh, five o'clock, yeah, dismiss. Um, but so I don't encourage that. However, I do encourage things like choosing a particular activity that you know you have to do every day, such as whether it's your 15 minute stretch because you've got shoulder pain or it's washing the dishes or your shower, pick that one activity. Like for me, it's gardening and stretching. So I pick that activity and I wake up in the morning and I head straight to my garden straight after I've brushed my teeth and washed my face because I know that I am going to get out there and I'm going to look at my plants and I'm going to be totally in the moment. My phone is in the house and that's my 15 minutes to set the scene for the day. And then come five o'clock, I try and do my stretching workouts because you've been sitting in front of a computer all day, you're all locked up in your neck and all that tension is just built, right? So I'm like, okay, I will go work out at five o'clock. And in that, five, in that 15, 20 minutes of stretching, no one call me. I don't even care if my phone's ringing. It's not even near me, you know? And so I actually don't tie my mindfulness to an alarm. I tie it to an activity sometimes in addition to me practicing mindfulness all the time. Yes. But that's what I'd recommend. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. Tying it to an activity. I'm a, I'm a really big fan of Oprah. Um, and she said, you know, in one of her chats some time ago, and it really stuck with me that she, same thing, everyone's busy. Where do you find time? And it's a daily repetition of when she, she's making her cup of tea and she's just mm. stirring her cup of tea that she knows that that's her time just to be mindful each day. So tie it to a daily activity. If it's making your morning cup of coffee or what have you um, to be able to, to have that moment um, as well. And I, I guess for mums out there that take the time to do classes like yoga and Pilates and me- meditation, and you mentioned at the first, at the start of the chat about potentially the similarity between meditation and mindfulness, but what is the difference, I guess, between meditation and mindfulness or is there any difference at all? Yeah. Well, to me, they're completely different things because mindfulness is a way of life. You know, it's, it's being aware of what you're doing, thinking and saying, as opposed to meditation, it's a tool of practicing mindfulness. It's just one tool like meditation, yoga, journaling, going for a walk. These are all tools it's not the be all and end all. And I really want to stress that because a lot of people try meditation thinking it is mindfulness and then it's really hard. (laughs) I've been meditating for over 15 years and yes, it's really hard. So then people get discouraged and then all of a sudden they're like, mindfulness ain't for me, (laughs) you know? And it's so sad to see people like that. And I have so many people I have to convince to come back to mindfulness because they started off on the back foot. So yeah, they're completely different things. Meditation is just one out of the many tools for mindfulness. So mindfulness is really the awareness of something where while meditation is the awareness of nothing. So 
when people sit there and meditate, they're trying to clear their mind of, of, mm. of everything. And mindfulness is actually the aware, awareness of something, as we're saying, you know, the, making a cup of tea and actually being mindful of, of how the, 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 I don't know, the spoon is going through the tea or the coffee or what have you. So there is a difference because mindfulness is the awareness of something while meditation is the awareness of nothing. Of course, there's different forms of meditation, but generally, mm. would you say that that's the difference between the two? There's heaps of different forms of meditations, yes, but essentially meditation is the act of focusing on one thing. And if you can start to steal all the noise and just really trying to focus on that one thing, then essentially that's meditation. When, when we do things like washing the dishes and really focusing on washing the dishes, that's actually a light form of meditation. It's, it's actually meditation in disguise because it's, um, it's an active meditation. It's when you're actually up and doing things but you're calming your mind. So in that way, they're sort of similar, but I would go back to the fact that mindfulness is a way of living. It's your choice of what you say and how you do things. It's your philosophy. It's your pursuit of happiness, as opposed to meditation is really trying to focus on that one thing, like your breath or um, a mantra or focusing on a guided meditation or a sequence or a visualization. I mean, there's so many things or a sound to help you calm down the thoughts in your mind. Yeah. So I guess, I guess, um, meditation is like going to the weights, uh, sorry, going to the gym and lifting weights, but then mindfulness is how you use your muscles during the day. Oh, I like that. I really like that. Say that again. So, <laughs> so meditation is like going to the gym and like lifting the weights. You're really, it's that short, you know, stint of full on practice. And after you've gained the muscle, it's like, mindfulness is during the day when you go out and actually just use your muscles in your day to day. I love yeah. that. I love that. And I guess there's a lot of thought leaders in this space, um, Eckhart Tolle being one, and they speak about the fact that the present moment um, mm -hmm. is the only thing that we really have. And um, mm -hmm. one of my favorite quotes of, of his is that this is quoting him, of course, realize mm -hmm. deeply that the present moment is all we ever have. Um, mm -hmm. Make the now of our lives, the primary focus of your life. Um, mm -hmm. So, but sitting in the present moment may be quite uncomfortable for a lot of people. And so the question really is, is mindfulness for everyone? Mm. I would say that everyone has the ability to practice mindfulness and to gain the benefits from mindfulness. And yes, I do think that mindfulness is something that everyone is actually already practicing, whether they know it or not, because to some degree, we are all aware of our mind, body, and speech. Um, our awareness, of course, differs along the spectrum. Some are more mindful than others. But I would also say that when you practice mindfulness, if you have things like um, depression and anxiety, just be really careful because it can be quite confronting to sit with your own thoughts and to sit in silence at times. Um, you, I'm not saying you always have to sit in silence, but you know, if you're in a meditation because someone's told you to just sit there and breathe, that can be quite scary. And if something traumatic has happened to you, sitting in silence, reminding you of that yes, and not having the tools and mental techniques to be able to resolve and process that is an extremely traumatic experience in itself. So I would say, you know, tread carefully if that is you and always make sure you are getting the help that you need. Um, whether it's through a teacher, a mentor, or even professional help. Yes. Yeah, I've definitely read that a lot of experts say that for people suffering with depression or anxiety may need to tread carefully um, because of focusing too much on the present mm -hmm. moment um, mm -hmm. without, I guess, um, appropriate guidance can actually make their symptoms worse. So I guess mm -hmm. as a disclaimer for anyone that is maybe um, suffering with depression, anxiety, um, that this is something that definitely that maybe speak to a professional about before sort of maybe delving in and, and practicing it each day, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. 200% correct. Yeah. Well, um, a little bit now about you were talking about your business at the start, you're starting to run a four week online mindfulness fundamentals course. Um, mm. So realistically, how can it help parents? Um, and uh, whereabouts can they find you then? 
So they can find me on mirasuna.com, um, whether it's on my webpage or Instagram or Facebook. So Mirasuna is just M-I-R-O-S-U-N-A. That'll see the name when you publish this. Um, my four-week mindfulness fundamentals course is really to teach people the fundamentals for mindfulness and meditation. Um, it's really to help people understand mindfulness holistically because I feel, and this is something I've seen time and time again, and even with my own journey is if you suddenly want to start your mindfulness practice, but you don't really know where to go. And to be honest, there's actually not many places to go. I don't know of any that do this. Um, it can be a very ineffective journey in the sense that you could be aiming at things that aren't really tailored or personalized to your own experience. And it makes it impossible for you to craft a practice that is going to work. And very quickly, you're going to become very discouraged because you're going to say, oh, mindfulness doesn't work for me. But um, the reason why I created this course is because I wanted to give people the fundamentals to their learning so that they could build their own foundations for their platform, uh, for their mindfulness practice, and ultimately walk away knowing what they have to do next and something that is sustainable into the very long future of their lives, you know, and that's really why I put it together. Yeah, so I'm up to my third intake now, and that starts um, in July. Cool. We'll definitely have the link through to that for you. We've covered a lot in this chat today. If you were to summarize your key messages for anyone watching or listening, what would they be? I would say don't wait to, um, to gain more happiness. The pursuit of happiness is fundamental to being a human. And we forget that, unfortunately. We forget that because we're so busy. So I would say don't give up on your pursuit of happiness. Number two, practice mindfulness today in all of your moments that you possibly can. There's nothing woo-woo or weird about it. Uh, I know sometimes it can be painted out like that, but Mirasuna is really there to show people that there's nothing weird about it. It's just a, humanist, a humanistic fundamental right and a skill that we all should have and practice. And number three, if you're serious about changing your life, really try and learn from someone who can teach you it in a structured way. You will get the most out of your practice and you won't have to wait 10 years before you can get results. This is great. Thank you so much for all of the information that you've shared. Um, thank you for the chat. Um, we'll definitely have a link through to the article and all, all of your sort of social links for people to find you and uh, really hope for the opportunity to have a chat with you again in the future. Thank you, Sally. Take care. No worries. Thanks so much. Take care. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Bye. Bye.